Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the two against uh, the Overlords campaign with Tapcat. He flawlessed uh, the Protect the Device mission. Damn well done. I actually appreciate that a lot. And he left me some more difficult mission for myself as well. Operation Godsteed is going to be difficult because it is... Yeah, for, let's forget about that. Wrong mission. What I meant to say is Operation Cosmic Moan, of course, is going to be difficult because it is a low-profile <laughs> side trap. Worst uh, profile. Well, surgical is bad as well. But anyways, only uh, soldiers of sergeant rank or lower are allowed on this mission. And for us, since we did not even have enough soldiers, I was forced to invest 80, 80 supplies to get us two rookies. But on the flip side of that, Haywire and Zoo Cougar just entered uh, the uh, mission. So good job, welcome uh, guys. Uh, you are going to go through a trial by fire. Uh, I have almost no great uh, options for grenades. Uh, and I think, to be honest, we might want to do this and a bit of that. And whilst we're at uh, this here, we're going to give that over. Perfect. Well, that gives us four grenades and a few more uh, uh, mine shields that are equally distributed. That's fine. Might as well, to be honest, give uh, the proper mine shield to our sniper. And Hayward hey, here takes the ultrasonic law. Pretty sure there are no losts uh, on this mission, but in case we're running into some, might as well have an item for it. In terms of building items, yeah, there isn't really much we can do. Smoke grenade, theoretically, but that's not really good, and I don't want to waste our supplies. Nanoscale vests are not worth it, so let's jump into the actual mission. Supply rates themselves are more on the difficult end. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, force level, uh, your normal force level is what, that det uh, what determines uh, the kind of enemies that you're fighting. Supply rates at up to plus two to the maximum force level. So we could fight even Archons and other nasty stuff already. Let's go. Look at that. Dropping down, highly motivated. Okay, well, no high ground as far as I'm concerned. But we're going to find that out sooner than later. If there is high ground, it is over here. So let's shortly move over. Nope, the very opposite of high ground. Substantial low ground. Sukuga so moves up. Okay. Hayward is going to be our other front line. Got a couple of medics. Will do. And we got a sniper. Um, I would say a good position for them would be right here. And whilst we're at it, brace. Yeah, this is not going to be easy. Moving over. Moving to designated position. Rookies are taking the front line. Hmm. Got it. Let's get a good fire line going. Got it. 
All right, racing and the rest of watches. And as long as we can isolate these two folks, we should actually be relatively okay. Um, let's use our classical Overwatch trap here. I don't want to go too close. I think we're okay. We're doing triple Overwatch. I'll keep... You know what? We're doing quadruple Overwatch. I actually think that's not bad. And... Let's start with the more dangerous target. Why did we not shred him? Didn't we give everyone shredder? Okay, well that worked out well. Good, we still do have one concealed target and I am going to use our sniper as a scout in that regard. It's funny because uh, the proficiency classes also give uh, the sniper the ability to actually be uh, like a mini version of um, of a reaper one of the skill trees allows them to just move slower and reduce the detection circle they can switch to vector rifles instead so it is a valid playstyle which I found that particular combination to be intriguing, that they mixed both of those together. So, fun fact number one, no chosen here, which I already find a bit suspicious. Good, we're bracing here. Still way too far away. Skuga moves up. Reload Overwatch. And a lot of other Overwatch. Just in case they are moving in our direction, we would uh, be able to trigger them and get an Overwatch trap off. Okay, works well. Uh, we're moving to here and to here. Reload Overwatch. Let's hope they are moving in our uh, in our line of sight. The answer is no, they don't. Not yet. Good bracing here. Hmm. Yeah, this guy here is accidentally left behind, air quotes, to make it easier for us to be spotted out. But no such thing. Let's just overwatch and let them run into us. Yeah, of course. Now, all of a sudden, they are quite as a church mouse. Here I come. On Overwatch. Come get some. Scanning. Overwatch. Gotta cover. Come get some. All right, come on. Bring it on, guys. 
I know you want to trigger. Don't give me that. Nah, nah I don't want to trigger. BS. See here you can see live how the how the engine uses your or uses its superior view um, view range in order to force you into engagements. This quote unquote patrol all of a sudden just stays there. Doesn't want to uh, get any closer. Um, yeah. This here will trigger. My biggest problem with all of that is it's just a poor mechanic. On Overwatch. Got it covered. I'm on it. Affirmative covering now. Nice feel. And I think it had been implemented uh, just to prevent you from kind of abusing stealths. Um Alright, shocker. Oh, we triggered. And there's, by the way, the... Um, the Viper King back there. So gotta be a bit careful. Well, hello there, good friends. Is it fair to assume that you want to be shredded? No? Well, pff, you should have said that in advance. I am sorry, Mr. Mutant. But how am I supposed to know that you don't like shredding? So Cougar moves up. Oh, come on. One short, really? Well, let's just get that mutant guy. Okay, Haywire moves up. Haywire removes uh, cover and some of uh, the armor. And we are trying to hit this guy. Oh, beautiful. Unfortunately, we don't have the subsonic shot, which would have been the clear solution here. And we might trigger the Viper King as well. Hey, where it moves up. We know the Viper King is somewhere there. Overwatch. 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 Reload Overwatch. Reload Overwatch. Well, the Viper King. Let's do this. 
nasty fella by itself, but together with a specter who could interrupt us, uh, interrupt us, it's even worse. Moves into full cover. Yeah, you can see the specter standing right there. Absolutely. Good, we're moving slightly over. Full cover here for Sam. And lots of overwatches. Good, listen, I know what we want to do here, which is a big fat overwatch trap for the viper king and the way we're doing this is by overwatch here and here and here and here and then we're moving forward in an attempt to kill uh, to trigger which clearly didn't work out as intended so we're continuing to move forward. The reason why I use overwatches is because if he moves in, the overwatches that are already in place will not trigger uh, reactions. Oh, nasty. Uh, unfortunately not a hit. That on the other hand is very much a hit. And we're killing this guy. Hayward gets the loot. Laram core isn't too bad. What we do not want to do is cluster up too much. Frost breath is a problem with uh, the Viper King. We don't want to be found in a spot where he can hit us all. Heals up completely. We're moving over here. And let's just spread out, which is the main idea. Yeah, unfortunately we only got one, uh, one overwatch shot, but that one worked very well with uh, a 11 points of damage All right, we definitely want to flank him uh, might as well start with that and Unfortunately he dodged Okay, could be worse, could be worse. The binding sucks, but this will be a 100% hit, thanks to our uh, stock. Fire 
That suppresses him. I see a critical hit. Six to eight is the most we can do. I mean, there's a good chance to crit him. <laughs> Missed, unfortunate. With a crit, we would have been okay and might as well even killed him. Unfortunately, our repeaters are already... Very much uh, used. We have only limited amount of repeaters. On the Let's move already. We are very much moving into a double flank. Really? Well, look. Triple dodge. What am I? What am I going to do? Triple dodge. There is nothing I can do about that. Okay, that's a hundred percent kill and potentially the end of the mission. Quadruple dodge. Yeah. Well. Considering the circumstances, it wasn't too bad. I think the rookies uh, took uh, the brunt of the damage. And we should have gotten uh, promotions for them. Look at that quadruple promote. Holy. So for starters, we got a beautiful uh, assault here. Can use shotguns. I like it. We're finally getting splinter armor. Mwah. Chef kiss. Uh, we've given him a light uh, weight optics. I would like to use the high angle for them. And Hayward becomes. Oh, that's so fitting for her. Uh, becomes a tech specialist. So. That's not bad. Look at that. On top we got 170 and ooh, plenty of everything. Which means we can finally upgrade uh, the grenade launcher to level 2. And the, that. And the Templar Ott pistol. Okay, I like it. Also... Field medical training would be good, or the marine uh, with fire discipline. I think we're going fire discipline. I mentioned it in one of the er earlier videos. Uh, the uh, tactics, uh, or the GTS tactics for the proficiency class, are really well done because they allow the lower level uh, characters to function as if they were higher level characters with the passive abilities, which I personally think is a phenomenal idea. It's really good. I like it much more than uh, further putting a another power creep into it. Uh, didn't Tepcat want them to look like Power Rangers? I think so, yeah. I, I don't approve that color, but I think we agree indirectly that that is the color of, uh, of Assault Infantry. Gotta make compromises. If you're color coding, gotta make compromises. Okay, cool. Well, that's a good start. Um, I think I would like. Where is the black market? Oh, did we lose that with the. Uh, yeah, gone to ground? Well, <laughs> that's not good. So we got enough intel, right? Yep. Which that here would be an option. This here is actually pretty damn okay. Tactical analysis is even better. 
and uh, we are missing uh, one additional contact. Hmm. Do we have anything that we can scan for? Uh, Intel, we got enough of that. Alien alloys, on the other hand, aren't too bad. So let's start that. Or am I missing something? Let's just double check. No, no, no. I think we're okay for now. Our inspiration did prove beneficial. Elarium, plasma rifle, powered armor. I like that. Plasma rifles are even inspired. How can I say no to that, guys? There we go. Zip, and we got uh, the plasma weapons. Got a lot of positive stuff happening uh, this month. I think we're still a bit uh, tight on the Chosen. Additional, uh, additional dark event sucks. And what do we have here? Sabotage. Well, that's not good. That would be okay. That would be okay. That's not so good. Uh, hidden event is okay. Well, we got enough XP. That isn't bad. I think we want to grow bonds a bit faster. I understand, Commander. And let's definitely get 415 income. That is important. We might need it a bit later. Negative traits remove complete but we don't uh, can't do anything else we also can't create another bond one two three hmm alien alloys part two i'm hoping uh, since we are at six out of six contacts that the game will throw us a bone and gives uh, gives us another contact Oh no, he does the exact opposite. Haven Assault, Operation Senseless Hero. Uh, it feels like that is a, an adequate name for it. Senseless, uh, senselessly, we're charging forward. Well, Tapcat is uh, having the pick of the litter here we can definitely do something with those uh, with our deep roster now I mean just look at that captain lieutenant lots of lieutenants sergeants I like how in this particular campaign we didn't have like a main team that just completely moved away from uh, from the main field but we actually got a lot of lieutenants and sergeants so if you think about it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, uh, 16, 18. That's three entire squads, sergeant or higher, which isn't too bad if you think about it. Um, for my taste, we put too much time into Hogbite uh, in the training bench already, so I would like to level him up a little bit more, but part of the problem was also him always being injured. That'll change hopefully soon. Yes, um, it wouldn't be a good day without Hogby. Covert action. Uh, oh, Tapcat, you're so nice. I love you, really. Uh, health plus one. You're the best. Good. What else do we have? Let's just see. Facility lead would actually be not too bad because uh, that would uh, allow us to invade facilities even if we're not right there. Gain resistance contact would solve our main problem and we're just gaining one resistance contact on uh, top, which is good. Um, all of these are okay. It depends on the secondary benefit. Uh, increase uh, faction here would definitely be good. And he was smart. We're getting uh, a skirmisher, a relatively high level skirmisher as well. So might even come in at the captain, uh, lieutenant rank. So that's not bad. Um, and 
we would on top of it get a couple of resistance orders uh, mobility points aren't bad soldier bonds is always good so actually relatively good covert actions uh, that are happening in two days and we got plasma rifle uh, plus proving ground soon we we'll have a bit of a shortage of uh, engineers but part of that is also that we haven't upgraded any of that yet ah do we want to do that i mean elarium is still okay but it's a finite resource however it would free up an engineer which isn't too bad so let's do that and look at uh, this so we can empty both of these and we're good The shielded power coil also gives us additional alarium back and can be used for shadow chamber for instance or psionics i think we are, are we playing with or without psionics i would need to ask tapcat what the verdict on that one was but if we are then in yeah, this year we should sort of go for it soon ish Our work is proceeding as, expected, Commander. as we are currently going through that powered armor would definitely be one of our next uh, objectives Yeah, we do have a lot of good research now that we are upgrading the final tier of weapons. Um, shielded power po uh, coil, we're, we're getting there. Just double checking with the armory. We're almost okay. Just got the lobbies uh, there, so might as well empty that and uh, put a third one here. Just to optimize it a bit more. Depending on how Tapkit can run the next one, we might need to shift back to the infirmary. But generally speaking, we should be fine. And five uh, engineers on pure excavation will mean we're excavating really fast. So that's good. Sometimes you need to optimize uh, this part here and also think about how you want to deal with the power relay. We do have 10 more power in tow. If needed, we can uh, shift that over again soon ish this is going to happen because uh no it's actually not proving ground is already factored in but yeah i'm i mean overall it's fine uh, it's an interesting um, an interesting split of engineers we're still getting more resources here and with those resources we can also get the tactics so i wonder Shall we just invest 180? I think we're doing that. Good. So we now got level one of all of uh, those trainings. And I'll just show you real quick as an example. Um, let's take a field medic here. And their indirect ability is medical specialist, which means one free uh, medkit charge. And uh, on level two, they get an additional revive charge and heal plus one hit point. So de facto you're paying 60, which is a steal to give every low level character the ability to heal more. And uh, on level three, once they are at major rank, it costs I think 120 or whatnot, but they would get yet another healing and then even more mad kit charges. So they have essentially included kind of the extra medkit charges into um, into the class ability and if you skill it uh, then the lower level characters will start out with much more agency and much more uh, competence than they normally would good enough education on the the mods thanks for watching guys and back to you tapcat gotta rule that take care and have a good one guys bye bye